Oh, well, hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. My name is Nathaniel Dodson, and today we're going to take a look at a really cool tool in Photoshop that will allow you to get rid of tons of different backgrounds with a simple click. Sometimes it takes a couple clicks, sometimes it's just one click, and it's amazing and it's so fast and great. Uh, is it the best way to extract stuff in Photoshop? For some things, yes, and it does a really, really great job. Other times you will want to learn how to use some of the more sort of intermediate and advanced features of channel based selections or select and mask and just different things like that. But this is a great way to extract a lot of different things in Photoshop. And you're going to see exactly how we do it right now. Alrighty, here we go in Photoshop. What I want to do is get right to it. Here under the eraser tool, we have a couple different erasers, the background eraser and the magic eraser. We're going to start with the magic eraser. Uh, it's pretty simple. You click what you want to get rid of. Boom. One click, the background's gone. The pineapple has been isolated. Now I know what you're saying. It's a white background. That's so easy to get rid of. And you're right. But name something that's faster at getting rid of a background than one simple click really fast. You don't have to worry about selecting the subject and going and select the masking and all kinds of complicated stuff. You do have some options up here. Tolerance. If you increase tolerance, it's basically going to say white plus kind of any light pixels in the image. See how it's blasting out a lot of the middle of the pineapple. Maybe you don't want to blast out the middle of the pineapple. You can check on contiguous. And what that means is the pixels need to be touching each other. So if I tick on contiguous, even at a tolerance of 176, you can see it only gets rid of stuff outside of the pineapple because none of that white was touching all those lighter bits on the inner part of the pineapple that it got rid of. So think of tolerance as sort of the amount Photoshop is allowed to attack uh, when you use this magic eraser. All right, let's close that image. I don't need to save it. And I'm going to move to the next image, the sky here. So let's say we want to replace this sky really quickly. It's not that that difficult to do. Uh, you want to click and oh, well, we only got rid of part of the image. Well, let's keep clicking, right? Just keep clicking and clicking until you you get rid of all the stuff you want to get rid of. All right, we want to get rid of the sky. And of course, you could try boosting up uh, the tolerance and get rid of some of the tolerance. Maybe that would help in a situation like this. Now that we have all this stuff that's kind of isolated, we could go with a more traditional eraser, right click. I would probably want this to have a really hard edge so I don't accidentally erase stuff that I don't want. And then just come in here and wipe away all the stuff that I want to get rid of, you know, something like that. And you could very easily, drag another sky image right over, drop it in place, put it right where you think it needs to go, drag it beneath that image and have your new sky in place that quickly. Now, are the edges perfect? Eh, they're not 100% perfect, but look at how fast it was. So what I'm trying to say here with this is with the magic eraser, sometimes you have to click a couple times. The reason I didn't boost the tolerance is because again, I'm not trying to wipe out walls of the home or you know parts of the roof. You can see we're still, we've got little speckles of the old sky up there. All that can be gotten rid of very easily with a regular eraser. All right, we're going to go ahead and close this document. Don't save it and close the sky as well. And we're going to come over here to this Audi. Here we've got kind of a similar situation where I definitely want contiguous checked on and I want to get rid of the white background. And not only do I want to get rid of the white background, I want to get rid of the stuff that's showing through here, the windows. So that window, I got that little window there. I got this window back here. I got this little piece of window through there. And let's add a gradient layer beneath the car. So we'll go layer, uh, new fill layer, let's say gradient. And it can be, yeah, whatever name, we don't care. And then for the gradient, I'm just going to pick like, a, I don't know, just a nice red gradient, just kind of a red to red type gradient. Hit OK and drag the gradient down beneath the car in my layers panel. Now, look at this. The car doesn't look all that bad. We actually got a pretty decent selection. It still has the, the white uh, reflection around the edges from that white background. That's to be expected. Uh, but the shadow looks positively awful. So we're going to, we would go back to the car and here's another case where you can try doing a couple things, boost the tolerance. Let's maybe take it up to 65 and let's choose that light gray and just try to erase, erase until we get a shadow that looks, um, passable, something like that. Um, and we definitely want to keep contiguous checked on because if I shut off contiguous, let's say, and you can see over here, we've got this little bit of white under here and I say, yeah, get rid of that white. You can see all these pieces of the headlight and highlights around the car are all going to go missing. So I want to make sure I keep contiguous checked on, get it, get rid of that little bit there. And very quickly, I mean, the shadow is still not perfect, but it's, it's close. It's getting there. If you zoom out far enough, it looks good from a distance. Um, and very quickly we go from a pretty complex cut with translucent windows to boom that quickly. We have the car cut out the magic eraser tool. All right, let's go ahead and close this document as well. We are flying right through this. Now this is where things get kind of crazy. So you might be thinking, Hey, a big solid color background. Let's go with the magic eraser. Well, if I go magic eraser, you can see it, it doesn't 
really do what we want it to do, right? Let's be honest. It doesn't do what we want it to do. So the magic eraser in this case is not the answer. The answer is the other eraser tool, and that's the background eraser. Now, the background eraser has a lot of stuff you can choose up here. The way that I almost always work with this is with the first icon here with a continuous sampling. I forgot what it was called. The continuous sampling, which is basically everywhere that little, see the little plus icon in the middle? Well, I can't see it if I zoom in, but the little plus icon in the middle of the cursor, that's where this tool is sampling from. So it's saying, hey, anything blue like the background, erase. See how it saved all that hair? Anything blue, erase. See how we're preserving all of her and her dress and everything like that? So anything blue, just go in there and knock that stuff out. Right? So as long as that little crosshair in the middle is on blue, it's going to do a pretty remarkable job making a really complex selection. Right, So we're able to go around in here and wipe all this stuff out. Now, I also have the limit set to discontiguous, and you can also do contiguous or find edges. I like to roll with discontiguous almost always, and a tolerance of 50% is going to work real well. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Let's go back to that background eraser and just knock out the rest of this blue. You may have to zoom in to really make sure you're just selecting blue stuff. So you're just knocking out blue background. You don't want to get rid of, You want, basically, you want to preserve as much of this crazy hairdo that she's got. Uh, as you absolutely can. So we're going to come in here and just knock out what we can, what we're able, and preserve everything else as best we're able. You can see there's some blue down there by her skin. There we go, something like that. And now, of course, we have this mess of blue that's left all over the place. This is easy. You can do something like the polygonal lasso tool and just click all around her. I didn't show you how to get to the polygonal lasso tool. You've got the lasso tool. Click and hold it, and here you got the polygonal lasso tool right below it. And then just click, click, click all around her. There we go. We're going to loop all the way up around the background this way, and then just hit the delete key. Boom, get rid of that. Command or control D to deselect. Let's get rid of this little piece. Delete that. Command or control D to deselect. Come right through here. Slide along the background. And just so quickly, we extract this head of hair. And let's just see what it looks like here against the sky. So I'm going to drag the sky over, put it in this image. Uh, maybe I'll make, oh, that's big enough. I'll drag her on top of it. And you can see it does a pretty good job. Like, it's not perfect, but that's pretty good for just a little measly background eraser tool. Now, it is a destructive tool, so this isn't a mask we can go in and adjust. It is very much a destructive tool, so it's something you want to think about when you're using it. Uh, but for something like this, I would go so far as to say that this example that I'm looking at on screen now, this is better than even Select a Mask could do with an image like this. This complex, you got all this motion in the ends of her hair that are whipping and moving, and this just does a really, really good job. All right, let's talk about one more example here. I'm going to close this example. I don't need to save it. I can close the new sky. I don't need to save that. And we've got this here, this, this uh, model. I'm going to go back to the magic eraser tool here, and I'm going to uncheck contiguous. Let's just click on the background. I have a feeling, yeah, it's too close to her skin, so it's going to knock out a bunch of her skin. But look at one click. We got rid of all that. I'm going to undo. I, this might be more a matter of adjusting the tolerance. Let's push it back down to like 30. Let's try doing that again. That's pretty good. Now, we can see we've done some damage there to her eyes. Those are missing. Um, so how do we fix something like that? Well, it requires a little bit of prep work. I, I'm just undo that magic eraser for a second. You can see I've got my background image over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this image. Command or control J. And then I'm just going to shut the top layer off. Now with my background layer, go ahead and hit it with the background erase. There we go. And I am going to turn on my layer one with all that old background and everything. Now this is where we're going to introduce a mask. You could say it's slightly more advanced, but it's really easy and it's super fast once you get doing it. We are going to select the little mask icon here, but I'm going to hold down my alt or option key to add a filled mask. It's going to make her disappear. So now I'm going to zoom in and all I need to do, make sure you have the mask selected. So it should have those white tick marks around it. Select the mask, grab the brush tool and uh, the brush size I have is fine. We want to make sure we're painting with the color white. The color white is going to uncover the image underneath and I'm going to paint over her eyes just like that. It's going to restore her eyes to the image, but of course preserve this really complex image that we have created. I'm going to go back to layer zero. Let's throw a layer of color beneath this and we'll see the truth here, just how good or not good this selection is. So we'll go layer, 
uh, let's say gradient again. I'll say okay, and let's choose. I'll go with something lighter here, but not so light that. Uh, let's go with the same. Uh, let's go with this blue. Let's go with this blue aqua color, and I'll hit okay. Whoa! Let's drag the gradient down below, and as you can see here, uh, it's definitely not a perfect selection, but it was also one click. So if it's something where you're in a bind and for whatever reason you need to get something knocked out really fast, you can do it with this. Now, one way you can make this these edges a little bit better, and let's just let's make our gradient a little darker so we can really have this effect pronounced let's go with this darker blue right see all this like light fringing we can defringe this layer zero so you would select layer zero go layer and we could try a couple things here under matting we could say remove the white mat let's see what that looks like okay that did a little bit i guess let's go back to matting and try defringing we can say defringe maybe defringe two pixels hit okay and that does a little bit as well but it's not perfect right it's just not perfect so it's going to become something where you know if this uh, model is going to be cut out and placed over a lighter color background, you can erase it in two clicks, one or two clicks, right? Just using a magic eraser and it's going to look fine for this or that application. But if it's going to be going over, if she's going to be going over a darker color background, you're going to have to spend a little bit more time uh, and just get that right and really make it look the way it needs to look. So... That's really it. The background eraser and the magic eraser, they are so easy to use. You know what? I'm going to give you one more example just as a bonus here for this application. I'm going to go with the background eraser, not the magic eraser. Uh, I want to get rid of the sky. The reason that I wouldn't use the magic eraser is just there's all these other colors and stuff going on in the sky and you're going to have to click so many times. It's just going to be crazy. So instead, I would go background eraser, discontinuous, continuous sampling, tolerance of 50. Uh, we can even soften this brush, honestly to help it fade with the hedges a little bit more here and then just go whoop make sure you don't paint over the hedges you want to make sure that crosshair is just getting the blue of the sky so click there we go click a few times through here and just paint away the sky and i want to make sure i'm getting close enough to the hedges that i'm really able to knock out the blue in and around those hedges we get this little piece of the the hedge sticking up little piece of plant plant life there i'm no botanist there we go and whoop I just painted over that a little much. Another key is paint in short strokes because if you just click and hold and try to paint the whole thing and then you mess something up, when you hit undo, it's going to undo your entire paint stroke. So just be, be wary of that. All right, so come right through there. Great. And we'll use that same trick with polygonal lasso now. Walk through this big wide channel that we've just created. Loop-de-loo all the way over and then up and then over and then join them together and join them together there we go and then hit the delete key commander control d to deselect we've cut out the brush the bushes and we want this more ominous sky so let's drag it in here and move it up there and go edit free transform and just stretch this guy out just something kind of like that maybe that'll look good and then just drag it underneath the bushes and it doesn't match at all because it's dark and ominous and the bushes are bright and sunshiny and everything like that but you can see it's a really really complex edge that's been created and it's been created very quickly using that magic eraser tool so the magic eraser as much as we all hate the eraser tool because it's it's destructive and it's not like a mask and those are all valid arguments and reasons um i have to say there are times when it's a really valuable and and very much a time-saving tool uh here in photoshop whether you're doing something like this uh with the hair or something like the bushes or something like the big flip de flu hair that we had earlier and there you have it. That is how we get rid of it. It's that little magic eraser tool and the background eraser tool. Now, they're destructive. Sure. Is it masking? No. Uh, but for just going in and hacking out an image really quickly, maybe you're creating a quick composite, slapping something together, or maybe you just don't like masks for whatever reason. You really should like masks, but let's say you don't like them. The magic eraser tool, the background eraser tool, they're going to serve you really, really well. So I hope you guys enjoyed it for learning a little bit about the background eraser tool and the magic eraser tool and a couple other little tips and tricks along the way. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Nathaniel Dodds in I'll catch you in the next one.